What if I told you that one of the toughest, most fire-resistant materials used in modern construction is made from wood pulp and sand? It doesn't sound high-tech. It doesn't look like much. But chances are, it's part of your house, or at least your neighbor's. Fiber cement board lines homes, shields buildings from the elements, and withstands fires, floods, and even termites. But the real story? It's how something so ordinary turns into one of the most resilient materials in architecture. Today we're breaking down how it's made, from raw, earthy ingredients to the precise, high-pressure process that transforms them into nearly indestructible panels. Let's dive in, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we get into how it's made, let's talk about what fiber cement board is. It's a building material made from a mixture of cement, sand, cellulose fibers, and water. Sounds simple, right? But when those ingredients come together in the right way, they form a product that's incredibly strong, long-lasting, and ideal for harsh conditions. Fiber cement boards are commonly used for exterior siding, wall cladding, backer boards behind tiles, and even roofing in some cases. They look a bit like concrete, but lighter, more flexible, and easier to work with. And it's all thanks to how they're made. It all starts with four main ingredients. Cement, usually Portland cement, which acts as the binding agent. Sand finely ground silica sand adds structure and durability. Cellulose fibers. These come from wood pulp and help reinforce the mixture. Water, used to activate the cement and create a workable paste. Some manufacturers also add small amounts of other minerals, additives, or coloring agents, depending on the product's end use. But those four, cement, sand, cellulose, and water, are the foundation. The cellulose fibers are first processed to make sure they're clean and consistent. Impurities like bark, dirt, and other debris are removed to ensure the final board is smooth and strong. Once the raw materials are ready, it's time to blend them into what's known as a slurry, a thick paste-like mixture. The sand, cement, and water are mixed first to create a base, and then the cellulose fibers are added. Here's where things get interesting. The fibers don't just float around in the mix. They intertwine and bond with the cement particles, creating a matrix that gives the board both strength and flexibility. This is what helps prevent cracking over time. Manufacturers carefully control the ratio of each ingredient during mixing. Too much water and the board will be weak, too little and it won't bind properly. Getting the balance just right is key. Now comes one of the most visually satisfying steps, sheet formation. There are a few different methods for shaping fiber cement boards, but the most common is the Hatchek process, named after Ludwig Hatchek who developed it in the early 1900s. Here's how it works. The slurry is poured onto a series of rotating sieve drums. These drums are covered with fine mesh that allows water to drain out while retaining the solid particles. As the slurry passes over each drum, a thin layer builds up. These layers are transferred onto a conveyor belt in overlapping strips, almost like making paper. Layer after layer is added until the desired thickness is reached. Then the continuous sheet is cut into standard panel sizes. The result is a soft, wet fiber cement board, which is still far from finished. Next up is the pressing stage. The freshly formed sheets are still damp and need to be compressed to remove excess water and ensure uniform thickness. This is done using a hydraulic press which flattens the board and improves its density. After pressing, the panels go through a pre-curing stage. They're stacked in a controlled environment where the cement begins to hydrate, a chemical reaction that slowly hardens the mixture. At this point, the boards are still somewhat soft, but they've started to take shape. The pre-curing process usually lasts 24 to 48 hours and it helps prepare the boards for the final hardening phase. It's a bit like letting the dough rest before baking. It ensures a better final result. 
Now, we've arrived at the secret weapon in fiber cement board production, autoclaving. This is where the real magic happens. The semi-hardened panels are loaded into giant pressure vessels, high-tech ovens, called autoclaves. Inside, they're exposed to steam, high pressure, and elevated temperatures for several hours. During this process, the cement and fibers undergo a chemical transformation known as hydrothermal curing. The result? A dense, rock-solid board with exceptional durability and weather resistance. Autoclaving is what gives fiber cement its legendary toughness. It locks in the structure, increases dimensional stability, and makes the board immune to common issues like warping, shrinking, or swelling. Once the boards have cooled down from the autoclave, they're ready for finishing. At this stage, the panels are trimmed to exact dimensions and sanded to achieve a smooth, even surface. Some boards are left raw for contractors to paint later, while others are pre-coated with primer or even decorative finishes that mimic wood grain, stone, or smooth plaster. Many manufacturers offer pre-painted or textured fiber cement panels, which save time on installation and give buildings a polished, modern look right out of the box. Before the boards are shipped out, they go through strict quality control checks. This includes visual inspections, thickness measurements, flex tests, and more. Any board with cracks, chips, or inconsistencies gets pulled from the batch. Once they pass inspection, the boards are stacked, packaged, and prepared for delivery. They're typically loaded onto pallets and protected with plastic wrap or cardboard to prevent damage during transport. And just like that, from slurry to siding, you've got finished fiber cement boards ready to be installed on homes, buildings, and infrastructure around the world. So, why go through all this effort? What makes fiber cement such a go-to material for builders? Well, for one, it's extremely durable. Unlike wood, it doesn't rot or attract termites. Unlike vinyl, it can withstand high heat and harsh UV rays. And compared to plain concrete, it's lighter, more flexible, and easier to cut. Fiber cement is also fire resistant, making it ideal for areas prone to wildfires or extreme weather. And because it holds paint well and comes in so many styles, it's incredibly versatile for both traditional and modern designs. All that performance is packed into a simple sheet, and it all starts with sand, cement, water, and wood pulp. So the next time you walk past a house with clean, modern siding, or lean against a wall that feels solid as stone, remember, it might not be stone at all. It could be fiber cement, doing its job quietly day after day. Built from simple ingredients, but engineered to withstand time, weather, and fire, Fiber cement is a hidden champion of construction. You probably won't notice it, but that's the point. It's there to last, not to shout. Behind every smooth panel is a story of chemistry, invention, and industrial brilliance. And now you know the science that holds it all together. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.